we've been talking about World War II and how it all came about. And we've been spending a lot of time with the Treaty of Versailles and understanding how those sanctions can cause Germany to rise up again or make them angry enough to, to rise up again. No one thought that another world war would ever happen. This is why World War I was called the Great War. But in 1939, that all changed. The war started in 1939 and it went to 1945. Why did the Second World War happen? Well, for three reasons. One, the Treaty of Versailles, as I said before and as we've talked about. People were angry. They felt that Germany was treated unfair, that most of Eastern Europe was treated unfairly by breaking up Austria-Hungary into nine different countries. $55 billion Germany was going to have to pay. And Germany took most of the, of the blame, if not all of the blame, for the war. So you had people that were still pretty angry with that. Well, then you also had the shift in government in, the, in Germany. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party were able to take over the government in Germany and really boost it through nationalism and get the people to understand that they were treated unfair and here's how we, we have to do things. And then you also have the reason that Germany and Italy and Japan, they removed themselves from the League of Nations. Well, as you know, we've talked about the League of Nations was set up as a peacekeeping thing. And for them to remove themselves, it was, again, another quick, um, decisive, and defiant decision that they made that was going to lead into certain things. And as we talked about, especially today, Adolf Hitler did a lot of things that defied the Treaty of Versailles and made people think that war was inevitable. Now, there were two fronts to the World War, or to the Second World War. Now, what is, what is a front? It's where the main part of the war is being fought. So you had the European front, where the war was fought in Europe, and you had the Asian front, where the war is fought in the Asian Pacific region. There were two allied sides. You had the Axis powers, Germany, Japan, and Italy. Those were your Axis powers. And then you had the allied powers, which is Great Britain, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Now notice, the United States didn't come in until 1941. That was with the bombing of Pearl Harbor that everybody so knows about. And then the Soviet Union came in at, to the Allied powers in 1941 as well. They were really with the Axis powers, and they had an alliance with, with Germany that was called the Non-Aggression Pact. And in 1941, Germany actually invaded the Soviet Union and violated that pact. So because of that, Russia actually, or Soviet Union, came over to the Allied power side. The leaders of the Axis powers, you had Germany, Adolf Hitler, Italy, Benito Mussolini, and in Japan you had Hirohito. Now, Mussolini and Hitler, both Italy and Germany, their style of governments was run by what we called fascism. And that's a dictatorship through nationalism. Hirohito had his style of government was an empire or a monarchy, but they practiced imperialism, so they were looking to spread their land out and control more colonies. Now, for the leaders of the Allied powers, you had Franklin Delano Roosevelt for the United States, you had Winston Churchill for Great Britain, and for the Soviet Union, you had Joseph Stalin. Now, the United States and Great Britain both had democratic styles of government. Of course, as we know, because we are United States of America, our style is that the people vote for our leaders. With Great Britain, their style is still democratic, but it's called constitutional monarchy. So they still have a king and queen, but at the same time, they have a parliament who those, the people in the parliament are voted for by the people, and they carry out the legislatures and ensure that the government is running as smoothly as it can. Now, Joseph Stalin, with the Soviet Union, their style of government was communism. And con communism was very much like a dictatorship. People had, everybody in the country had a job. It was all about working to make the country more powerful and improving the, the, the country. And Joseph Stalin was one of the 
greatest known dictators of this time, and really probably of all time. Now, with World War II, it started in September, on September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Now, Germany had a specific style of warfare. It was called the Blitzkrieg, which, is, which the Blitzkrieg really re, uh, means quick, relentless moves to win a battle. When you think about it, for those of you who are football fans, think about the blitz plays that, that football teams do in order to speed up the game, take a decisive move to try and get the ball back. Well, this is what, this is where that word came from, is the blitzkrieg, the quick, decisive moves to win the battle. The reasons for entering the war, well, Italy's was the alliance with Germany that they had and the expansion of their empire. They were trying to practice imperialism as well. Now, Italy didn't last in the war the entire time. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, not unfortunately, but fortunately, the people of Italy figured out that Mussolini was not doing as what he said that he was doing, and he was not really focused on the improvement of the country as they believed he was. So they actually removed him from power, and Italy had to bow out of the war. Now, Japan, Japan still had the same idea that they had the alliance with Germany and they, had, they wanted the expansion for the empire as well. So both of these countries still had full-fledged reasons to enter the war. They had their own reasons. And we dropped the board again. Look! Ah. All right. So the United States enters the war in 1941. Why? Because of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. That happened on December 7th, 1941. Now, the biggest question many of you have asked is why did J Japan bomb Pearl Harbor? Well, one of the reasons is, is they were looking to expand territory into China. They were already at war with China and were trying to take over China and imperialize China. However, China really wasn't having it. So one of the ideas that they had was to seal off the overseas trading for China. That would mean that they would have to take over and seal off any trade in the, in the Atlantic Ocean and in parts of the Pacific as well. This would have been a big no-no, and the, they knew that the United States would step in because with the United States, that's their biggest industry area is trading. And they had to use that, that stuff. So that would have been a threat to the United States. And they knew that the United States would come in. So why not try and take out their military first before um, they stepped in? However, what they did not realize is that they did not take out as many of their naval warships as they needed to. In fact, the United States knew or had an idea that something was going to happen. And as a safety precaution, they had pulled out most of their warships and left about five to ten warships in the, in, the, in the Harbor Bay or in Pearl Harbor. And those were the ones that were attacked that day. And then the others were put into the middle of the Pacific in a secret hiding place until they were mobilized. But the war ends in 1945, and both fronts of the war come to an end. In April, or in, at the end of April and the beginning of May in 1945, the European war ends. Both the United States and the, and the Soviet Union surround the German forces, and they push them back. And then in August of 1945, the Asian war front ends, and it ends when the United States drop two atomic bombs on Japan, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Now, with, the, with these atomic bombs that have been dropped, there was such destruction that Japan automatically gave an unconditional surrender. The United States wins the arms race. And what I mean by that is during this entire war, Germany and the United States, Great Britain, Soviet Union, Japan, all of these countries were pushing to figure out a way to increase technology, increase their weaponry, and increase their, their battle tax, tax, tactics. excuse me. And with that, what we call that is an arms race. 
So the United States were, was the first to get or create the atomic bomb. They dropped it on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and they won the race for this moment. Now, the effects of World War II, there were several. First off, it led us to the Cold War, which is an ideo ideological fight between the United States and the, and the Soviet Union, or the USSR, over politics. The idea of freedom voting people or communism and socialism. And we'll talk more about that next week when we get to that. Then you have your war crimes in Nuremberg. We've talked about the, the we, we, we will be talking about the Holocaust more, and we've talked about some of the war crimes. However, with the Holocaust, many of the Nazi officers and the soldiers go, are, are arrested and are put on trial for the atrocities and the genocide of the Holocaust. So we do go through that. There were about 50 of them that were put on trial for the Nuremberg trials. And then, of course, the arms race continues, and the race, and this is the race to have the better weapons and technology. And all of that we will continue to discuss later on when we get back to the Cold War, which we will be doing next week.